Today's guest is Shonda Ja of the organization Without Fear Anti-Oppression Consulting. We talk about the community of organizing and diversity, equity, inclusion, and how she hopes in helping the movement and not selling it out by shifting from one to another. We also talk about people's ability to make change, in which she wrote about in Transforming Communities. Please give a warm welcome to Ever Blessed, Shonda Jaw. So, I mean, I think one of the things that's worth naming is from my vantage point, and I think the narrative we get in the U.S. about immigrants is all these people who come to the West for a better life. And in some ways that's true, but I think most immigrants aren't necessarily drawn by opportunity so much as driven by divestment, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the places we come from, so for my father, I think he would have been thrilled to get to stay in his village in India and have his life. But a whole bunch of things conspired that meant since he was the youngest and he wasn't married and our family was struggling financially, he was the one who was sent abroad to support the family um, because he didn't have the same attachments. And so um, very often we have this narrative of, you know, going off in search of a better life he was going off in order to allow his family back home to be able to survive in the place where they wanted to be. Right? And of yeah. course they say, if you don't remember your history, history repeats itself. So exactly. if you decide not to stand for that, I mean, back to that story in regards to, to listening to the stories of my elders yeah. and having women saying that they had to fight for their rights to yep. vote, fight for their rights to have a job, fight for, and, and we're and, and like literally, or fight for their rights of their own choice of their, of, do, for mm -hmm. their body yep literally 50 to 70 years now here we're going through this we're having the same, same fight. situation mm -hmm. and it's like we played this song so many yep. times it's like this i think people assume the only way you can be involved in the work of justice is uh to be marching in the streets that's not what everybody's job is but that doesn't excuse anybody from being involved, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that um, we all have roles. I, one of the things she will never forget is the number of mothers who were like on their way to dropping their kids off to soccer practice would stop by the office with a plate of food. And mm -hmm. she said, this is what we don't talk about is nourishing the movement is part of the work like taking care of the kids so that other mothers can show up and do organizing. That's part of the work. There's so many aspects. Like if you have any sorts of gifts, you have something to contribute to the movement for justice. It doesn't just have to be in the streets. Oh, well. yeah. yeah, it was great. So I really do think one of the most inspiring things about um, the queer community is a deep commitment to consent that was one of my favorite things about transitioning out of traditional straight, uh, the, the straight world, mm -hmm. uh, where that in theory is a thing, but it is, it is an essential part of um, queer community. Right. Um, it is really a steadfast held value. And I think that that's pretty inspiring and beautiful and a gift to everybody right, um, to right. find ourselves more deeply in um, everybody being being willing to advocate for themselves and to get their needs met and to be prioritizing each other's needs. Mm -hmm. That's a, that is very different than my experiences in straight dating. <laughs> right? Isn't it was it like, how do I? Thank you for listening to Noise Blue Zion podcast. And if you enjoy listening to my podcast, please don't hesitate to give me a five-star rating on Apple or Spotify. Also wanted to give a shout out and thank you so much to all my guest, past, present, and future. And stay tuned for the next upcoming episode on Fridays.